Committee's final report asserts that Donald Trump criminally engaged in a, quote, multi-part conspiracy to overturn the lawful results of the 2020 presidential election and failed to act to stop his supporters from attacking the Capitol. This concludes an extraordinary 18-month investigation into the former president and that violent insurrection two years ago. That report about 814 pages long, so rather than have you read the entire thing, we did bring in the expert here. Elizabeth Wydra, the president of Constitutional Accountability Center, joins us to help break it down. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me this morning. So what stood out to you the most about this 800 plus page report? I mean, I think, you know, in some ways your uh, your question just answers it. This has been an extraordinary, meticulous, professional, bipartisan investigation that has amassed a huge mountain of evidence to back up the charges that it has made about the conduct of former President Donald Trump and his allies, what they think should be done to hold him and uh, his co-conspirators accountable, and what needs to be done in the future to strengthen the guardrails of democracy in order to make our democratic institutions stronger and hopefully protect from something like this happening in the future. The length, the volume of the evidence, I think the fact that pretty much um, to a person, the, the witnesses were Republican, um, were members of President Trump's inner circle. You know, this isn't, this wasn't, uh, you know, testimony of Democratic politicians um, speaking out against a rival. These were some of former President Trump's most trusted advisors, his attorney general, his, you know, campaign officials, um, longtime members of the Republican Party who were speaking out against this uh, plot, really, this effort to overturn an election that Donald Trump knew he'd lost up to the point of an insurrection at the Capitol and some people even losing their lives. So we know that this has been going on now for about 18 months. So let's go back a little bit. What has stood out to you the most about this entire uh, process, all of the hearings? I know it's kind of hard to you know, boil it down to one or two points, but what has stood out to you the most? I think in some ways, really the clarity of the evidence, you know, there isn't, um, it isn't really a question after all the evidence that was presented in these public hearings and that is detailed in this report that there was an effort, uh, a premeditated effort to have Donald Trump hold on to power regardless of the election which is an extraordinary statement to make um, if you step back a little bit and think about American democracy, where the peaceful transfer of power is at the heart of our constitutional democracy. You know, the idea that we the people go to the ballot box, cast our vote, we can have faith and hope that those votes matter, that the people we elect will uh, make good on their oath to support and defend the Constitution, represent us and our democracy, and that the people who lost the election will abide by those results and, again, participate in this peaceful transfer of power that, you know, extends back to President, our first president, George Washington. And so I think just the, the clarity that there was this plan to try to hold on to power, to keep Donald Trump in power, regardless of the fact that the majority of the people of America voted for someone else to be president. That's really extraordinary. And the fact that we had so many Republicans come forward in testimony to say that he had planned to declare victory regardless of what the vote looked like on election night, that he knew he had lost the election but continued this pressure campaign that went from state and local election officials all the way up to his own vice president um, and that he knew that the mob was coming to dc angry and armed and not only didn't stop them from marching to the capitol but provoked them and uh spent the time watching those horrific images on tv that so many of us i think still recoil in horror from today and didn't take the steps that were necessary to protect the people on that day and to protect our democracy fundamentally.
So based on what you've seen, based on this final report, on the hearings that we've seen over the past 18 months, do you believe that charges will be filed against Donald Trump in connection to the insurrection? It's hard to say in the sense that, you know, this is obviously something that is up to the Justice Department and they are going to go through their own processes and investigation and get the information that the January 6th committee will transmit to them and also gather more information. There were people who refused to cooperate with the January 6th committee and the Justice Department will have uh, even more resources at its disposal to get that testimony. Um, but I think, honestly, it will be hard for the Justice Department not to follow through on some charges because the evidence that has publicly been presented, and we've all seen it, is just so compelling. And the Justice Department has successfully prosecuted many of the, you know, as Congressman Raskin put it, the foot soldiers of January 6th. You know, those people have been convicted of in some cases, seditious conspiracy. They've been convicted for their actions and gotten jail time for what happened on January 6th. And if the people at the top don't, then that says um, something very bad about whether we can continue to hold true to the maxim that no one is above the law in this country. Is there anything else that sticks out to you about this entire situation? Is this what you expected to see happen when this all began 18 months ago? Did you think it would go for this long and that we'd see as many people uh, testify and provide that information? You know, um, it's you know, we've never been in this situation before. It's so unprecedented and, you know, it's still the the fact that this actually happened, you know, even though I live just a few miles from the Capitol, it still has this kind of air of um, surreality to it because it is it is such an unprecedented, um, un-American act. Um, so I have to say I, I was truly surprised by the clarity of the narrative that came through in the hearings. And if you look at the report, um, even if you don't read all um, 800 plus pages of it, just the table of contents and the way it's laid out really tells the story of of how there was this multi-part plan to overturn the results of the election and keep someone in power who the American people did not vote for, which is um, wild. And I think one thing that I want to um, uh, focus on for a minute is not just the look back on what happened at January 6th, but the report also goes through recommendations for the future and makes some policy recommendations um, that can be made to strengthen our democracy, strengthen our um, administration of elections, strengthen our democracy. And I think that's important for us as we look to hold those responsible for January 6th accountable and also try to prevent such things from happening in the future. And you just touched on this, but what do you think the future holds? What impact can all of this have in the future? Well, I think, um, you know, I, I was pleased that it was a bipartisan committee, that there were um, Republicans on that committee, and that Republicans, again, were the bulk of the witnesses um, at this hearing. Because I think it's um, very unfortunate that democracy itself and the um, ability to trust in the vote of the people has become something of a partisan issue. And I think that um, the American people can push back on that and say, you know, regardless of what party we're in, we should be able to cast our votes, trust that they will be um, given the legitimacy that they are due, and that the people we vote for in our constitutional democracy will be able to um, take their positions and represent us, and that we won't have people use violence and intimidation and suppression to try to thwart that vote and to overturn the will of the people. So I, I would hope that that is one impact that we ourselves as voters um, can uh, make ourselves and demand of our leaders. All right, Elizabeth Wydra, we always appreciate your insight. Anything else that you wanna add before we let you go? Yeah, I think that, you know, it's um, obviously, I think the committee, it's bipartisan members, it's bipartisan staff did a tremendous job of um, laying out this roadmap of accountability, this roadmap to justice for January 6th. Um, but, you know, now it's up to all of us to engage. You know, we have to be active, engaged 
members of this American constitutional democracy. And, um, you know, as we make our resolutions for 2023, uh, maybe think about making a, a renewed commitment to democracy and being involved in your community in that way, one of them. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time to help break down that report. Over 800 pages, a lot to read if you just want some light reading, I guess. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you, too. Happy New Year.